Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's going to be the final conversation we're having this morning. We're going international now to talk about, I think he can be called former President Donald Trump. Um, and of course, his uh, social media accounts that have been suspended. Uh, we've uh, been joined this morning by Mr. Tony Usidiame. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for stopping by. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, I'm going to quickly just share, you know, from Donald Trump's Twitter handle, uh, this was tweeted on the 19th of uh, December 2020, and it says, Peter Nav Navarro releases 36-page report alleging election fraud more than sufficient to swing victory to Trump. A great report by Peter, statistically impossible to have lost the 2020 election. He ends by saying, big protest in D.C. on January 6th. Be there, will be wild. He also tweeted, the big protest rally in Washington, D.C. will take place at 11 a.m. January 6th. Locational details to follow. Hashtag stop the steal. This is, uh, was the president of the United States. Um, would you say that social media um, accounts, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and um, Instagram, were right to have suspended his accounts? Um, f first and foremost, let me say that with the freedom of expression that the Constitution uh, in a democratic setting guarantees citizens comes um, a responsibility for how you use these media. And um, when a president or anyone for that matter uses the social media to circulate uh, fake news and incite people to violence, of course, the social media platforms have a responsibility to censor or to uh, suspend or ban, uh, depending on which uh, they've decided to opt for, that user for contravening the community guidelines. Don't forget that um, social media platforms under the free speech principles are self-governing, self-regulatory. So they have the power... Uh, based on the rules that they have set for the community to sanction erring users. And I think that is what happened in the case of President Donald Trump and the social media companies were well within their rights uh, to do that. Right. So the mob or mob of U.S. citizens, they stormed the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday and uh, Facebook has now banned Trump indefinitely. Twitter has followed suit, blocking some of Trump's tweets for violating Twitter guidelines. And they're saying that Trump incited the people, stirred up violence, and, you know, that's why, they're, that's why they're now, you know, banning him from social media. Do you think this is the solution? Of course, um, like I said, the the freedom of expression that the Constitution guarantees citizens also comes with responsibility. In America, there's what is called the First Amendment. This is the freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Um, in other countries like the UK, there's something called the Article 8. And most um, democratic countries have similar uh, provisions that guarantee citizens the, the right to express themselves. And, um, there's nothing wrong in having dissenting views on popular views, but when those views are capable of inciting people to violence, then the social media companies have a responsibility to put a stop to it as they have done in the case. So like I said before, um, if people are allowed to continue uh, without any kind of uh, moderation, we're only brewing anarchy as we, we almost saw at the Capitol um, a few days back. So people, especially people in positions of authority, like the president of a country, must lead by example. And I think making an example of him um, would be a lesson to the rest of us that we cannot go about spreading false news and inciting people to violence uh, without there being consequences. So I think it is a step in the right direction for the social media companies. Don't forget that if they fail to do this, they are also exposing themselves to legal suits because of damages that may arise as a result of the activities of their users. And I'm sure um, these social media companies wouldn't want to find themselves 
in that kind of situation. So I think it's a great example uh, that they've made of the president for the rest of us to be more responsible as to how we use uh, social media. How, how, how do these um, levels of censorship by the social media platforms uh, work hand in hand with uh, a country's laws? Nigeria, you know, sometime last year, you know, went, um, there was a lot of conversation about so the social media bill and, you know, how they were trying to uh, control fake news and, you know, create laws that would control uh, social media usage. And so, you know, how do you think that social media censorship by the companies themselves uh, can work with the laws of a country uh, that maybe wouldn't need such um, extra laws, you know, being placed uh, by uh, a government. Yes. I remember I was on your TV station to talk about that issue um, a while back. And um, what I said at the time still remains that the free speech principle allows the state to impose only a limited, limited set of civility norms on social discourse. The responsibility for moderation falls largely on the social media companies, who are the intermediate companies in this case themselves. Now, don't forget that the countries, um, Nigeria for instance, America as well, already have laws that deal with things like uh, seditious libel and the likes. Uh, they can call on, up on, the, on those laws rather than attempting to introduce new laws that would be seen um, as, a, as, as, as an attempt to take away this very important right of citizens. So the, the, the state has to allow the social media companies do their work. As we have seen in this case, uh, the American uh, legislature can decide to take other measures uh, as a result of the actions of the president. There are already talks about impeachment based on this incisive uh, action, inciting action that he has, he has done. But the social media company have done their own job first by suspending him. And I think that is the way it should be in a democracy. If you allow the state too much power right. in this case, then it would be seen as taking away the rights of citizens. And we don't want that in a democracy. Thank you very much, uh, Tony, for your thoughts on, on this matter. Good morning to you. Thank you for having me. Mm. All right. Sarege, it's so it's so important to actually realize the power of social media, you know, to influence people in Nigeria and in the U.S. We saw how it was used to enable the NSAS protest and, of course, the George Floyd, uh, you know, the killing of George Floyd protests against police brutality in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and Nigeria and how uh, President Donald Trump used social media to incite people, you know, that he had been cheated out of the election, calling for people to call, go out in his defense. And, you know, the Capitol building was invaded. People, people dead and all of that but uh, hopefully you know the social media giants have uh, taken the right step in the right direction and biden will be inaugurated wednesday january 20th uh, 2021 um, yes um you know it's important you know that you know it's it's also mentioned that um regardless of how much free speech you know your rights uh, grant you you know once you go overboard you know and you break certain laws you know there definitely will be consequences, uh, consequences for that and some people would even argue that Donald Trump's two handle should have been shut down years ago not you know when it was already too late the incitement didn't start um, two weeks ago or three weeks ago it started you know three years ago four years ago um, when he became president and you know the things that he was spewing back then that's most of what we have. Um, actually, that's all we have for you this morning. Uh, the news comes up next at 9 a.m. For now, it is goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us all through the week. This is officially the last breakfast for this week. Amen. Uh, and if you <laughs> missed out on any of the goodness and the conversations that we had all through the week, quickly join us on social media at uh, Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I am Osao Gie Ogbonwa. And I am Aneta Felix asking you to have a beautiful weekend.